Okay, so we're going to be making a collapsing bridge. Uh, it is going to be a new class, and we'll instantiate them when we find brown pixels. So you're going to have to change your map to have some new kind of pixels to read from, and I think it'll be great. So let's do it. Here we go. It's extending F box like all the other things, because boxes are great shapes. And we're going to have to, it's going to be angry at us for a little while while we're just doing our basics to set things up. The collapsing bridge will have almost no new information it has to keep track of. It's basically just an F box. It's just going to have some new behavior. That's, that's all it's going to be special about, about this. So it will need a constructor. Um, so I'm going to have F. I, I, I'm kind of now sad about using the letter F in front of everything because it's getting me down here. But oh well, I, I'm gonna, not going to give up on that. We're going to keep going. Um, so F, dot, F collapsing bridge is going to be our constructor. And we're going to have to do super at the beginning, like all of our other ones. Uh, and we're going to give it uh, grid size, grid size. And all that is is just calling the fbox constructor. And then we're going to need to, uh, from the sort of from the setup where we do this loading, we're going to basically just borrow all the properties that we're going to give it. So right now, in my setup, I have it sort of here, you know, if, if the color equals brown, then I want to go make this kind of brown box and set its position and all this different stuff. So I'm going to basically kind of copy this over. I'm, I don't need this because I already have it as super, but I'll bring some of this stuff over and we'll talk about what is going to be our big problem with all these terrain things. So this is, you might not have this already made, uh, but you're going to want to still have sort of if C equals whatever color you're going to have. So we'll, we'll come back to it. So I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to paste it in my collapsing bridge constructor. And now instead of B, it's going to be this. And this. And this. And world.add this. And boxes.add this. There's still a problem, though. We still have a problem. And that is that X and Y. We don't know what those things are in this tab. So although you know we can you know, basically remember all these other things, x and y are not known over here. So there's a couple ways to solve this problem. And I'll let you decide which way you want to solve it. Although I think there is probably a better way if you're thinking in terms of like software engineering compared to just like getting a project to work. But there's also a simpler way and a harder way. So the reason why x and y don't exist over here is because in the main tab we <coughs> declared it in the setup so it doesn't exist anywhere else so what we can do is we can just make those declared as global variables that's one way to do it so instead of having them declared in setup I can just set x and y to zero and have them declared up here as a global variable I'll stick it way at the top Int x and y, and specifically these are for loading the map x and y. And that will work. That'll be fine. Uh, I think you'll see that that red goes away now. So that solves that problem. Just so you know, that's generally considered poor form in, in software engineering. And where I'm using this term software engineering as um, sort of not just a discipline of making a project, but in making a project that will not fail, as making a you know a project that is robust and will you know last the test of time and not just like be held together with like duct tape and, and glue kind of thing. And so a preferable way, I guess, the, the reason why people don't just go make all their variables global for communicating between tabs is just that you end up with so many variables and it's really hard to tell what's going on in your program when so many variables are alive and and are available everywhere. So in software engineering, they try to limit the number of global variables. That's not really our goal in this course, so feel free to ignore this and just do this. Uh, but if you were interested, another way of doing this, I'll just back it up. I'll leave these variables as declared in setup, and what you can do is you could send them as parameters to your constructor. And so I can send x and y um, to the constructor of this Thing that we're making. So we're making an F collapsing bridge. I, I regret it already, uh, the name. Uh, I'm going to call it um, 
CB <laughs> for now equals new F collapsing bridge. Oh. And then I can send it X and Y. And it will then get that information. And then we can keep those variables from being global. Is this going to change how the program works? Not really. But in the long run, if we build a huge project, limiting the amount of global variables keeps our project from getting overly complex when we're trying to figure out what problems are, are happening. So I, I actually prefer this way. And this is if you go into computer science and software engineering, then they'll make a big deal about not using too many global variables. So I guess watch out for that. So this, you can see this doesn't work right now. It's still kind of red underline. So the problem is that in our class, we're not prepared for that. We don't have any place to accept those. But that's the space right here. Those parentheses are a place for you to receive incoming information. So I can put in, it's, you could call it x and y. Uh, they don't have to be named the same thing, though. No reason not to name them the same thing. But uh, I'll just call them x and y as sort of the position of where, excuse me, that these should be plunked down. So there you go. That's the that's the deal with our collapsing bridge so far. It really doesn't do much <laughs> at this point. If I was to run this code, uh, let's just make sure this works. So that's f collapse. Oh, I, I spelled it wrong. Collapsing bridge. I still spelled it wrong. Collapse sign bridge. There we go. Collapsing bridge. Um, so if we do that. Then if I run it, then we'll see some brown boxes, and, and that's good. There they are. There they are. There's my collapsing bridge boxes. So nothing great has really, we haven't really improved things a lot. I mean, our loading function is kind of nice and skinny now, right? You can imagine um, this sort of looking better than having all these things kind of hanging out. But our real advantage of having done this is now I can add some behaviors to a collapsing bridge. So it's looking out for some kind of contact with a player. And if it touches a player, we could set static to fall. <coughs> then it could fall. So that would be sort of adding an act function. So I can go and do that. Um, let's see. Sorry, i got to scroll over. I can go add void act. And so what void act can do is basically check for collisions with the player. And if it is a player colliding with it, then it can set static to false. That's great. Also consider something like an ice bridge. Maybe every time you touch it, it reduces its hit points or something by a certain amount, and then eventually crashes. And think about how that might be different as we're making this. Um, but I don't, we're going to keep it simple right now. But anyone who's sort of like, yeah, yeah, this is not that exciting or something, if you're kind of bored and know what's going on here, then I would totally recommend thinking about, how, what, as we do this, how would you change it to add in like data that it has to keep track of? But if you're not bored and you're feeling overwhelmed with this, then we'll stick with what we got and we'll, we'll make it work. I think the, the act function is going to be, this. what we're going to do right now is going to be this classic thing we'll do over and over again in this project, where if you want to check for collisions with a player, it's surprisingly annoying. It's surprisingly... Uh, complicated. So here we go. Here's the story. We're going to use get contacts to get a list of all the things that are touching our, our box here. And we have to search it to find if there's a collision with a player. If there's a collision with a player, set static to false. So actually, we might have already done this. So it actually might not be that annoying. <laughs> but we'll go for it and see if uh, we can make this work. So um, what we'll do is uh, do the get contacts thing. So we can say this dot get contacts. So this dot get contacts gets all the contacts of whatever is touching this particular box, and we can store it in a uh, array list because that's what it returns. So I'll make an array list of f contacts. I'll call it uh, contacts. If this looks familiar, uh, we've done it <laughs> before. It's going to be kind of similar to the F-bomb. So the F-bomb is <laughs> it's got something similar in it too, right? It's got this uh, sort of, it doesn't get contacts. It searches through all the, the boxes uh, in the box list. 
but it kind of does stuff with it. So we'll do a similar type of thing, but I'll cycle through all the, uh, con the contacts instead of just all the boxes in general. So I can do something, I guess, like, uh, I don't know, we got a for loop or a while loop, or what do you want to do? Any preference? For loop? Four, let's do it. So basically, I want to start at the first contact. I want to keep going as long as I am not beyond the end of the contact list, and each time I'll go up by one. You can also do the for each loop, I guess. Oh, sorry, uh, contacts.size. So this is a common loop you're going to see over and over again. Start at the first thing, keep going until you get to the end, each time go up by one. That's, that's basically what that means. <coughs> what we'll do is we'll take a look at each contact. Remember, a contact is a report about a collision. It's like an ICBC like <laughs> record of like two things hitting, and it's got all this information about the collision. So one of the things that it contains is um, the thing that's in, inside the collisions. So what you can do is ask if it contains a particular... Um, a particular object. So what I have to do first is get the get the report, because there's more than one, so I'll get one of the reports. Uh, the report stored at i. So I'll make a f contact object to store that. I'll call it uh, c, because I have no imagination. Um, and it's just a temporary variable, so I'm not worried about it. And that'll be contacts.get i. So that'll get the first report about a collision. There might be more than one, so you know I don't want to give it any like special name. But the loop will take care of that. It'll go through all the different contacts. And then I can ask questions. Like I can say if C dot contains uh, player one. So if it contains player one, that means, oh, a player touched me. Oof, I should fall. And so I can say, um, this dot set static false. So there you go. This is a nice loop that will be constantly checking its own list of contacts and will, uh, you know, it's going to be in my current setup, it's going to be touching things all the time. It's going to be touching like its brother bridge blocks beside it, right? But you don't want it to fall because it's touching a bridge. You want it to fall when it's touching a player. So that's where this comes in handy. Yeah? Making sense? Great. So it won't work yet. And you might be like, oh, that sucks because like already it's kind of complicated. Um, so the last part of the pattern is basically we have to make sure we call the act function. And this is where we're kind of going back to the asteroids project. We're going back to the um, the uh, bullet hell project where you, know, you have some kind of engine that goes through all of your special blocks and tells them to do whatever it is you need them to do. And so this is going to be a common story again. So if you see it this time and it doesn't quite make sense, don't worry, you're going to see it again and again and again. It's sort of the special engine we're going to build just for all of our special F boxes, all of our classes that are extending F box. Eventually, we'll make it work for uh, the players, too. We might as well, because they have an act function as well. Uh, but for now, we'll just make it work for this collapsing bridge. So I'm going to go back to the main tab, and I'm specifically going to go down to the draw function. And I'm going to make um, that engine. This player, it's fine to make the player just call that act function. No problem, there's just one player. But I got lots of bridges. I don't want to go through each bridge and, like, you know, this one act and this one act. There might be hundreds of them. So I want to make a loop that will go through all of the special things that have an act function attached to it and make it do you know, whatever it is it's supposed to do. So we're going to basically rewrite the engine code from asteroids. If you can do that from memory, then wow, good job. You can like sort of, or at least if you can imagine sort of what that looked like, then that's fantastic. Um, but I don't expect most people to be able to do that. So we'll do it together, and this will kind of be a... The, what we can build this on uh, the rest of our stuff on top of. And let's see if I can even remember exactly what it should be. So in Asteroids, we went through a list, right? It was the uh, game objects list. I think it was called objects. 
what's our like list of special things called this time? Uh, boxes. It's just called boxes. So I'm going to make a, a loop that will go through boxes and then look for specific things and tell them to, to do their axe function. Right now, however, boxes has a bunch of stuff in it, right? It's got some just plain old F boxes. So, you know, they, they don't have axe functions. So we got to differentiate. Like, what is it that we're looking at? And do we call the axe or do we not call the axe? And that's going to be a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a thing to solve. So I'll make the loop. I'll probably make a for loop again. Hey, guess what? It's going to look the exact same. Oh, almost the exact same. It's going to start at zero. And we're going to keep going until we get to the end of boxes this time. But each time we're going to go up by one. Man, that's like the most common loop of all time. <laughs> I mean, other than the what it is, like going to the end of some collection of things. This is the classic loop. It's the reason, I don't know if it's the exact reason, but it's one of the reasons they made for loop as a shortcut for the while loop. And then, well, again, we'll just get the whatever it is. Now we're getting boxes, and we'll look at it and be like, hey, what are you? Are you a bridge? If you're a bridge, we'll make you do your thing. And I wonder if there's like a slightly better way to, 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 to make this happen, but I think this is a good, good starting place. Yeah, Harry, thanks for your question. Yeah, so actually that's a good idea. We could use just the name. Uh, I didn't actually set the name property. <laughs> So what Harry's suggesting is, hey, if you gave it a name, then you could differentiate it from other stuff. It's actually a pretty good idea. I was going to use the instance of keyword, but there's no reason not to use uh, the name as well. So you could use either one. Maybe we'll use the name to keep it within Physica and, and, and not really circumvent anything. And it's just good to have a name anyways. I think this will be a bit of a problem because if you don't have a name on some of the things, it will have a null pointer exception because the name will be null. So you have to go and name everything if you're going to name one thing. So that's a bit of a problem. I guess there actually is a way around that, but um, I'll do it. So let's go with that. I'll go add in my collapsing bridge constructor. I'll put this dot name equals bridge. And this dot name. Oh, no, this dot set name. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's this dot set name. It looks like this, actually. I thought it was a public variable, but it's not. There we go. This dot set name bridge. And I probably have to go this dot set name, anything else that I put in there. And that's like way up here, so I don't know. I'm kind of lazy, so I think I won't do that. I think I'll just write my code to ignore the null pointer, which will be a little bit of complication, but I think it'll be okay. So, no, it, it, it's easier just to set all the names no, without doing anything clever. I think we'll just, I'll just go set all the names. And I would suggest you doing that as well. So for like a green box, oh, that's not in boxes. Anything that I'm putting in boxes, like this black box, I'm going to just say b dot set name um, plain. Just a plain box, just ground or something. Uh, anything else that I'm adding in here? That's it. That's all I have. So anything that I also add in boxes, I'm also going to set the name to. So that'll just avoid a null pointer when I go to ask what the name is. And if you have more that are in your list that you're adding to boxes, also add the, the name to that. OK, so then I'm going to make this uh, loop back in here. So all I'm going to do is get the F box. And they're all F boxes, so I can confidently say F box, like whatever temporary variable name, equals um, boxes.getI, and then I can ask a question about it. So I can say, hey, if it's uh, if the b.getName, and then you have to say dot equals. It's kind of annoying. Strings can't work any other way. You can't use the double equal sign with strings. Then I would say, uh, if it equals bridge, then we want to make it act. I wish we could say dot act. I wish that was the answer. That would be beautiful if we could do that. Can't quite do that. But this is the spirit of what we want to do. Except for a, a quirk of Java and, and object-oriented programming, this is essentially what we want to do. We want to loop through all the boxes. 
get a box one at a time. If it's a bridge, we'll get the bridge to act. So the concept there makes sense. I'll just quickly mention, here's a great AP computer science question for anyone who's taking it next year. Why doesn't the act work? So the thing is that this is an F box. It's not an F collapsing bridge. So F boxes don't have act functions. But we know that if its name is bridge, we know that what's stored there is, in fact, a collapsing bridge. It's just its type is not collapsing bridge. Its type is the superclass. And it's actually a thing that's a subclass. So we, we experienced this in the bullet hell project. I think we avoided it in asteroids. But we experienced this in the, uh, the bullet hell project. So we had to do this thing called downcasting, where we make B a, the, make it the type of what actually is there. And that's called downcasting. And it's this kind of annoying thing where I have to sort of temporarily rename this to be a type of collapsing bridge thing. So I'll make a collapsing bridge object. I don't care what it's called, I'll call it C. And I'll equal that, and then I will downcast it. So I'll put in front of it F collapsing bridge. Um, like this. So I basically want to make C B, but C will be properly named. And you might wonder, well, why did I just call this in the first place? Well, there's going to be all sorts of different things in this list. Some will be collapsing bridges. Some will be players. Some will be Goombas. And some will be lava blocks. And some will be switches. And there'll be all these different things. So you'll see this pattern over and over again. So we'll just grab the thing, rename it, and then b.act. I'm sorry, c.act, c.act. And then we'll make it go. So there we go. And the reason why we have to do that is because, again, f boxes don't have acts built into them. So in order to make it work, we're going to call that. And then we have this engine code. This is our sort of new engine. So you can sort of engage with it at whatever level you feel like. This isn't AP comp sci, and so you don't, I don't want everyone to necessarily you know, go and like rack your brain about like all these details. The lowest level of engagement is just knowing the pattern here. So if you're like, I just want to like make a new kind of block and make it work, then this is the pattern. Anytime you want to make a new thing, you're just going to copy this code, basically, and make a new if statement for the next kind. So if you want to make an animated block, maybe it's a lava a block, then you'll look for lava blocks, and then you'll cast it to whatever your you know, f lava um, l equals you know, f lava, flava, actually. <laughs> I'm into that. That's great. And then l dot act. There's no flava yet, but that's like, see how like it's, it's very formulaic? We're going to be doing the same thing for each new kind of thing that we create. And I'm sorry that we have this annoying feature that we have to kind of overcome. Um, but it's not that big a deal in the end. So that is sort of one level of engagement where you can just see where you can adapt it to the next type of object you make. Uh, the, a higher level of engagement, if you are feeling up to it, is actually like sort of investigating a bit more about this downcasting thing. I'm happy to talk to you more about that. If, if there's enough people, we could do it as a, even as a group exercise. But I probably won't go into it too much more detail right now. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say that most people have had enough of, of, uh, of listening to me, I think, for this uh, class. So you know, in, in the future, I'll probably ask, how many people are like down with downcasting? That sounded so lame. That was <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever said. Oh my god. Who wants to do more with downcasting? I'm going to make. Like one of those like terrible teacher raps. Have you ever had a teacher rap to you? Mr. Jack, I bet, has done it. You ever have any of Mr. Jack? I bet he, he edited it like terrible. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make the worst rap ever about downcasting. Down with downcasting. Yes, it must happen. Um, so, you know, there it is. Uh, we'll take a look at it in a future class. But I'm going to just save it and run it and, and just like make sure it works or what a waste of time we've had uh, today. So I'm going to go and run over there. And right now, you know, coursing through our project, each of these is being told to act. But they're not touching a player yet, so nothing happens. And, and I, 
And if I jump on top of it, look at that. They fall. They're like primed for doing their thing. Bloop. They, they will fall only when I'm touching them. And you know what? They're still acting right now. They're actually still acting. And nothing will really happen with it. But you can have some, you can have some fun with it. You can, you can sort of make this different. If you want to make them an ice block, you could take this. You could add some kind of hit points that decrease when you are touching a player. And when they get to zero, that's when you set static to, to false. Or you can make this an if-else. I, li I like this idea. We have an if-else. So if we're touching a player, set it to false. Uh, set static to false. Otherwise, set static to true. And that way, they're sort of like a little like, I don't know, is that an elevator? You get on it, and they're falling, and you, let, and you get off. Oh, I guess static, I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it's working. Yeah, I was trying to make it stop midair. I thought that would make it work. I'll have to think about why that didn't work. It might, oh, maybe we have to set its velocity to zero? No, static should. I'll have to think about that. But anyways, you can have some fun experiments with that. And another thing we're going to do is kind of merge some of these blocks with the animation code. So their act function will be to like move to the next costume in some sort of animation so that we can have blocks that sparkle, like diamond blocks that have sparkles in them, or lava blocks that bubble, and all that kind of stuff to create a more beautiful world that is alive and is doing cool things. Um, so hopefully this gives you enough of a pattern to get started on some of those things as we go forward. We've made like three different classes now. We've got a bomb that has a timer in it that can affect other boxes. We have a collapsing bridge that can detect specific collisions and respond. And we have a player that is animated and is and controlled with keyboards. So that's a variety of stuff. For next class, I'm going to release a kind of a list of different kinds of terrain to create. And we'll, you know, if you don't want to make them for your final game, it's okay. Uh, we'll make them anyways for just like, you know, trying it out and learning about how to make them. And your final game can use them or not use them. But we'll have another checkpoint later on in the month where we'll kind of go through the list of uh, terrains. And you'll demonstrate you can make a teleporter and a switch. And uh, I don't know what else, you know, whatever other things are on the list. Uh, and then you can enjoy sort of creating those things, exploring this type of code, and, and making it all work in the end. <coughs> all right, thanks everybody. I'll, I'll just turn that off now. I don't know where it is. Please tell me I've been recording all this time. I think so. <laughs> Bye.